Hello, I'm Mary and thank you so much for coming. I pray that as you listen to this video today, your life will not remain the same again. And I believe with all my heart that God has brought us here tonight one more time and all through this conference to do us good in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Now, just two things very quickly. Number one, um, I sincerely want to take the time to celebrate and honor every father, every veteran of the gospel while standing. I'd like us to honor every man and woman of God place hallelujah thank you I will tell you why I said for us to celebrate these graces the spiritual health of any city is a reflection of the labor seen and unseen of the men the women the vessels of God hallelujah in this city there are intercessors seen and unseen in this city there are prophets seen and unseen in this city there are teachers seen and unseen in this city there are apostles seen and unseen so that you have this level of interest for god it's not just because god brought a great man to this place it is because there are people who labor day and night some of them have lost their lives even while doing what they do some of them have sacrificed their everything for the name of Jesus to be preserved and the Bible says them that rule well should be counted for double honor one more time let's honor the servants of God <laughs> hallelujah one one of the things one of the things that I will never do is to come into a city and downplay the sacrifices and the relevance of the vessels of the Lord within that city. I am only here for two days and I leave. But these are the people that continue, that build. I sincerely want to thank you secondly for the honor that you have shown me right from the airport. Um, the Bishop, PFN Chairman now, and all of the marshals and the officials you have shown me profound honor and i do not take it for granted may the lord bless you <laughs> hallelujah reverend dan to you and your wife may god bless you incredible grace hallelujah you will go from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ and sir thank you so much representing the body of christ thank you for the honor i do not take it for granted are we ready for tonight let's lift our hands and our voices and cry desperately for an encounter desperately for an encounter desperately for an encounter desperately for an encounter pray and ask the lord to give you a radical transformation an encounter by his spirit sheba la casa branda gabala kato se fresh rata kapala ko shaprande gebele ko kosa give me an encounter take my ministry to another dimension take the work that you have given me let your hand upon this land be multiplied as far as impact is concerned in the name of Jesus Christ father we pray that you will help us tonight we receive wisdom by the Spirit Spirit of the Living God we yield ourselves that you find unrestrained access in this place raise men empower men Grant us light, even by your word, and to Jesus be all the glory. Amen and amen. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap, and then please be seated.
hallelujah please be seated i have a number of things that we're going to be discussing in the course of this conference and i'm sure that you know that it is god's desire that every time there be these kinds of apostolic and prophetic convergence that moves beyond the boundaries of church denominationalism this was the kinds of meetings that brought what we call the epistles of paul he summoned people regardless their prejudices about the things of god and began to teach them on the things that would make them of stature this was the protocol of the early church in acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in breaking of bread in fellowship and in prayer hallelujah they continued steadfastly and so i really want to salute all of us again because the things you are about to hear by the spirit of the living god are designed to equip us this is why he gave on to some apostles he gave on to some prophets evangelists pastors and teachers the bible says for the equipping the maturing of the saints that the saints being matured will do the work of the ministry that all together we come into the fullness of the stature the measure the stature of christ he says not to to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive so we're here to explore the word of god and let me plead that you lend me and lend your destiny your undivided attention in the parable of the sower the same seed fell on all the grounds but the quality the yield some literally had zero yield and the bible talks about the soil being the heart of men that the one on good ground represented those who heard and then understood and even among them that understood they had three kinds of results some 30 fold some 60 fold and others a hundred fold hallelujah i've come with a burden from the spirit god has given me a mandate especially in this season not just to regions but to nations there is something god is doing across regions there is something god is doing across nations there is a reorientation that god is bringing to the body of christ that is positioning us for that which he seeks to do before he returns and it matters that we have that understanding in acts chapter 26 and verse 19 when paul stood before agrippa in defense of his faith he began to tell them the story of his encounter and he said acts chapter 26 and verse 19 that i was not negligent where upon o king agrippa he said i was not negligent to the heavenly vision you can receive a mandate from the lord and then abort that mandate through carelessness through pride through insensitivity he says say unto Archippus that you take heed to the ministry that thou hast received in the lord that thou fulfill it receiving it is only one part of the equation fulfilling it is another part of the equation when jesus came he came with a sense of unbending focus and urgency and he said i must walk the works of him that sent me he said whilst it is day that means there is timing to this assignment every time is not convenient he says for the night cometh when no man can walk again hallelujah and so we're going to be dealing with three things in the course of this conference and i just want to state it so that um, we have an appreciation of what God is doing in our lives. Hallelujah. I believe that one of the things that God is doing across the nations of the earth is helping men understand his prophetic end time program. Please let me your attention. God wants people to know what he is doing now. 
it is important for us to know it says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith that means not everybody has that kind of ear Habakkuk said I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I will see what he will say unto me and it's important for us to know everybody who will be relevant in today's world from a spiritual standpoint must be able to have a thorough understanding of God's program in the course of this conference many of us especially laborers in the gospel God is going to be explaining for us the basis of our various frustrations even as we preach the gospel because your satisfaction and your fulfillment only comes to the degree to which you align yourself with this program are we together I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me so God desires for nations and people to understand his prophetic program in this season and you see I have I think in one of the sessions that we had in this city I told you that there are three levels of the anointing when it has to do with the dealings of God with men number one the Bible says that there is the anointing that comes to the believer on account of your being grafted into Christ he calls it the anointing within you it's an engracing of the spirit that helps you to live the victorious Christian life the serious problem you will be surprised that it will not affect the delivery as far as your office is concerned hallelujah this was a tragedy of people like Samson the power that was upon Samson was not just a product of the health of his consecration there was a mandate upon him and even when something was getting wrong with his personal life he still had the strength to remove a city gate and take it up the mountain but the third kind of anointing is very rare very few people are able to carry it in a generation that is not an anointing that just comes because of your being grafted into Christ that is not an anointing that just comes because of your office it is the anointing that comes as a reward for discerning and aligning with God's current program hallelujah that every time through the sacrifice of alignment when a man that is the whole idea of the word consecration the word consecration has two expressions number one it means abstinence from number two it means devotion unto so when you talk about consecration it talks about two things abstinence from then devotion unto are we together so understanding the prophetic blueprint of the spirit can end you an opportunity to be able to carry very superior levels of graces this is what i believe has distinguished people even within the body of Christ because the same Lord is rich unto all but our possibilities do not just depend on his love but our various levels of alignment so that if God wants to do this and that in the southeast this and that in Enugu state those who will pay the price by the spirit to hear and understand what God is doing and to make themselves available they are the kinds of people who carry this third level of the anointing hallelujah Jesus himself called the 12 you would think they will all operate at the same level of grace they were all ordained by the same Jesus yet their results differed mentored by the same Jesus all of them were with Jesus so there should no there should be no reason for the disparity in results hallelujah out of the many apostles they did many great things but there were a few who stood out number one was peter number two was paul number three was john the beloved 
remove their contribution in the new testament and you are left with total ignorance about the program of god now other other contributions are there but you extract the contribution of peter extract the contribution of paul and extract the contribution of john and you are left in total ignorance as to god's program this man labored more than all to bring in perspective to the believer they were the ones who brought the many things that jesus said i have many things to show you but ye cannot bear them now imagine studying the gospel without the epistles jesus never taught us that we were exalted on high and seated in heavenly places jesus never even taught us to arrange the satanic kingdom in that organogram it was apostle paul who brought perspective to the believers experience so that the gospel becomes a foundation for your understanding but the epistles become what gives you stature and balance we never knew there was anything called the word of knowledge we only knew the holy spirit that was what jesus taught it was paul that says sit down let me teach you there is as it were diverse gifts albeit by the same spirit so what did they touch that gave them this edge in the spirit there is a grace that responds to alignment are we learning already so that we do not blindly assume that just because god is moving anointing men that automatically because we're in christ i i have i have taught and you may have heard me say that not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are things that are rewards in fact the bible calls god himself in hebrews 11 verse 6 the rewarder it is a name it is not just what he does the rewarder in the book of revelations he says i have my reward with me hallelujah and so we're going to be looking at three things in the course of this conference number one by the spirit of god we're going to be understanding god's prophetic program for the nations and god's prophetic program for the southeast what is god doing in the southeast what is the role that the southeast has to play as far as god's prophetic program is concerned number two we're going to be learning the kind of believer that will be used by god to execute that assignment because it is very clear from scripture that many can be called but very few are chosen we see that adumbrated in the story of gideon that when gideon blew the shofar 33,000 people were called but out of them only 300 people were chosen and there were certain conditions that began to break the list down two of them that's not my teaching today but it's important for you to know that just because you are called does not qualify you to be sent no empowerment is at the point where you are sent not at the point where you are called 12 disciples were called but it was not 12 disciples that were sent one made himself the son of perdition and jesus had to account for his fall he says all that you have given me john 17 i have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture be fulfilled are we together so it's important for us to know the kind of believer up front let me tell you this every name you call in the bible whether you call abraham you call isaac you call elijah you call esther they are not just the names of individuals the names in the bible are spiritual pathways that produce a certain kind of believer are we together now so when you say elijah there is elijah as a person but there is elijah as the name a capture of a spiritual pathway that if followed will produce a certain kind of believer when you say gideon gideon is not just the name of one who was valiant in battle and defeated the midianite gideon is also a capture of a spiritual pathway that produces a certain kind of believer one of the ways you will know the holy spirit is working with you is because as he trains you you will start finding your parallel in scripture there must be a pathway he's following with you that begins to parallel the dealing of someone in scripture so there is a way god can begin to train you 
that you will see that this training is leading to Esther there is a way God begins to train you that you know this training is leading to Paul there is a way God is training you that you will know this training is leading to Ruth there are general principles by which God raises people but there are unique pathways that are only allocated for the individual destinies this is the reason why in following people to evolve there are two rules of engagement number one follow them who through faith and patience number two looking unto Jesus because there are certain pathways that are virgin pathways no matter how properly mentored only the Holy Ghost can navigate you through that path is someone learning already yes all of this this is just a preamble to what we're going to be discussing tomorrow we must know the kinds of believers that God wants to use most Christians donate themselves in blindness and ignorance and say God use me as sincere as that is to be available is only one of the requirements to be used by God there were many available vessels in the Bible that were not used by God the narrative we have received is once you are available God will use you that is not correct read your Bible there were many people who gave themselves sincerely but were never used by God because there are conditions nevertheless the Bible says the foundation of the Lord standeth sure having this seal that the Lord knoweth them that are his then he says let every man that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity then he now says in a great house there are four kinds of vessels is that in your Bible it says there are vessels of gold silver wood and clay some vessels are unto dishonor and some vessels are unto dishonor uh, unto honor yet it is still called a great house it is not the vessels that make the house great it is the builder that makes the house great are we learning now so it is possible that there are many many sincere believers who may not be captured in the prophetic scheme of what God is doing across the nations and this will not be a demonic attack is that many have not been methodically mentored to understand what God is looking for there is a certain kind of man that God is looking for Elijah I mean um, Isaiah was always available but he was not usable right from Isaiah chapter 1 the book begins by a man prophesying he was not a fake prophet he was never charged with falsehood yet in chapter 6 there was still a call who will go for us and the same man who had been prophesying said here are my send me so you are tempted to ask who sent him from chapter 1 to 5 that he was prophesying just because activities are happening within a region does not mean you are sent hallelujah praise the name of the lord so please i want you to lend me your attention as god helps us and then number three the third thing we'll be considering in the course of this conference is how to be the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and it says great grace was upon them all with great power it takes power to bear witness to the resurrection of the lord jesus christ first power to become then power to do then power against power to become is what is responsible for furnishing the character of the christ in you power to do is the grace for performance power against is the grace that keeps you standing just because you are empowered power is in dimensions the bible lists various levels and faces of power he gave them power to become there is power to do there is power against he says haven't done all to stand stand it takes power to stand it takes power to remain that regardless the onslaughts of darkness against you on account of your weakness if you are not empowered to stand reminds me of ephesians 6 and verse 10 it says finally brethren the apostle is speaking he says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might be strong in the lord hallelujah praise the name of the lord so let's look at god's end time program 
what is God interested in doing in Enugu, in the Southeast, in Nigeria? We're having a discussion um, with Reverend House on the Rock uh, briefly when I arrived, and he was saying, Apostle, it looks like there are mighty things that God is doing from Nigeria to the nations. And I said, You are correct, sir. One of the graces, one of the unique privileges that God has given us is that in this prophetic move of God, it has so pleased the Lord by His Spirit that Nigeria and this country and this region would play a spearheading role in revealing a very correct picture of the Lord Jesus to the nations. It is, listen, it is, an, it is a responsibility. It is not something to brag about. In fact, if you understand what I just said, it should make you cry because it then means it then means that the destiny of many have been tied to individuals tied to men of god and we must have a covenant that lord if it is under my watch by your grace i will not fail hallelujah praise the name of the lord now the prophetic program of god generally as revealed from scripture and then as revealed by the spirit in these days was designed to affect three groups of people the prophetic program of god was designed to affect three groups of people number one the world of sinners or unbelievers the first group that god's prophetic program targets is the world of sinners or unbelievers as we call it number two the second group that the prophetic program of God targets is the church, believers themselves. These are the second group of people as far as God's prophetic program is concerned. And then the third group represents the entire society, territories, communities, civilizations. Let me repeat myself one last time, that God's prophetic program is designed to affect three groups of people number one the world of sinners number two the church number three society it's important that you have this holistic capture in understanding god's program many times when we deal with matters that relate to the great commission we bring isolated scriptures and they bring lopsided understanding you see when you are dealing with scripture it says and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise are we together you know um it's important that we are holistic in our capture of scripture so when the bible talks about the great commission for the average believer if you ask the average believer what is the great commission the only thing they will tell you is that souls should be one and that that is not wrong but that is very very incomplete hallelujah for you to understand the great commission you must look at mark 16 matthew 28 and acts chapter 1 and chapter 2 these are the scriptures that must be put together to produce the complete picture of the great commission when you read mark chapter 16 and verse 15 jesus himself was speaking and he said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel he said to every creature go ye into all the world preach the gospel to every creature are we together so you see that from Mark's synoptic account using his perspective you would think that the only thing he was asked was to go and preach but when you now bring Matthew's perspective in Matthew 28 from verse 18 down to 20 he says all authority the word power there is the greek word exousia all authority the capacity to represent me has been given in heaven and the earth has been given he says go ye therefore and he mandated them to disciple nations he didn't say just go and teach are we together that you should go and disciple nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit teaching them to observe all that i have commanded you so it takes more than preaching the great commission has a preaching dimension to declare to announce to proclaim but it has a teaching dimension to bring men into an awareness of a reality it does not happen just by proclaiming you will need to teach 
all he says teaching them to observe everything are we together and then when you now go to the third dimension that is found in acts chapter 1 and verse 6 it says but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me he never mentions names he mentions cities and territories jerusalem is not the name of a person judea is not the name of a person samaria is not the name of the person the uttermost part of the earth is not the name of a person so it affects people unbelievers it affects the church and it must there must be a context of the great commission that translates into transforming territories if you are with me say amen. amen it is dangerous for an individual to be saved and yet his territory is unsafe an example of such in the bible was the man lot lot was a righteous man but sodom and gomorrah was a dangerous place and even though he was a righteous man his life was still at risk it matters that salvation permeates the territory not just the individual you can be a good man in the midst of a wicked world it will still affect your efficiency you would think that because lot was a righteous man it should automatically immune him look what those people were going to do lot was willing to give two of his daughters and destroy their destiny because of the moral decadence within a nation it took the angels to drive those girls in otherwise those men would have destroyed those ladies yet that donation happened by the pressure that was on a righteous man in an immoral world are we together this is the apostolic dimension of the great commission that must be understood you see and i say this with all due respect um our lopsidedness in understanding god's program is what has translated to the limitations that we see in our lives the limitations that we see in our assemblies and the limitations that we see in territory for the most part the average believer is not mentored to see that he has relevance as far as territory is concerned and there is a history to that error when you study church history there was once upon a time under the leadership of a vicious emperor called nero are we together where believers were martyred they barely survived days as soon as they were saved in within 24 72 hours they died so for them the concept of nation building the concept of maturity and stature was not there it was just remaining strong until you were martyred then when you read fast forward a time of another emperor called constantine when constantine came by a vision that he had a strategy was invented through that vision and it brought victory for the people against their enemies their adversaries and because of that constantine passed a decree that the christian faith should no longer be persecuted so here are believers who had a history of dying immediately they were saved martyred in gruesome ways now they had been given the liberty to leave they did not have any relevance to society because the mindset they had was the mindset of martyrdom are we together now and that mindset is still at work in the church until today it has robbed us of the opportunity to be light and salt jesus never said we are believers alone in matthew chapter 5 teaching in what we call the beatitudes from verse 13 to 16 he says ye are the salt of the earth so our relevance is beyond just one-on-one -on -one evangelism there is a context to god's program that must that must affect and influence society are we together Can I tell you, one of the reasons why, with all due respect, many men are frustrated, men of God especially, Saturdays represent the most frustrating moments for many preachers because they are at a loss as to what to preach on Sunday. It takes understanding for you to create sermons after 20 years of ministry. You most likely would have exhausted everything you can find in the Bible. What will keep you relevant is an understanding of God's program. What we largely do as ministers is to just invent anything we feel we have not taught before. So there is a random application of knowledge that is leading. is not synergized to produce a certain kind of believer. When you understand the program of God, a lecturer has been lecturing for time 
30 years but his edge is that he's repeating the same curriculum but with freshness so you can produce predictable graduates because the body of knowledge that trains them is not a guesswork it will be a risk to send your child to a man who does not have the end of the picture in view and he comes per lecture and says what have we done today and then he brings a 600 level course to a 100 level student then gives him another he random mixes the courses at the end of it the student is in class but there is no growth are we understanding now so what we call church service should be a continuation of an intentional program understood by the preacher and understood by the members is god helping us let's look at the global harvest for tonight god's program the global harvest please do not miss all the sessions i believe with all my spirit that god is doing a very mighty work i took out time to pray and to ask the lord that for the sake of one person who has been sent by god in this conference who must be positioned to represent his purposes with power that god will visit his people with great grace i truly believe that there are people you were sent by god here you didn't just come because you were aware of a program your coming here is proof that you are representing the nameless faceless people connected to your destiny and for their sake i plead that you lend me your rapt attention let's discuss the global harvest matthew chapter 9 please from verse 36 this is the first dimension of god's prophetic program if you are asking what god is doing now across the nations now in enugu state now across the east of the niger i'm telling you by the authority of scripture and from the lens of the prophetic that this is god's prophetic blueprint in the now but when he saw the multitudes okay i have it here the bible says he was moved with compassion because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd his response he said to the disciples the harvest truly is plenteous please read the remaining line but the laborers are few one more time but the laborers are few one more time but the laborers so in the mind of jesus the problem with the global harvest is not the size of the harvest it's not the stubbornness of the harvest is the inefficiency of the laborers in the mind of jesus he's saying every sinner is a potential harvest not about to be ripe is already a harvest and he's saying if you find out that the global harvest ever suffers the problem is not the stubbornness of that child the problem is not the cult person the problem is the inefficiency of the sickle that should bring the harvest the harvest truly is plenteous and then he says the laborers are few jesus is diagnosing the condition now as far as the global harvest is concerned he's telling us that it is not because the gentleman there cannot be saved it is not because the prostitute is so hardened he's saying there's something wrong with the vessel if the axe head is blunt he says there will be much energy but he does not leave us with the diagnosis alone the next verse tells us his recommendation 38 he says give us verse 38 media pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest the lord of the harvest is the holy spirit he's the one with the mandate of seeing the the uh, the overseer of this project called kingdom come is the holy spirit the general overseer of this project called kingdom come is the holy spirit he is the shorty the reason why we know the project will not fail hallelujah and he says pray ye the lord of the harvest that he will send forth he never said that he would talk to the harvest he said he, he said he would send forth laborers into his field all across your city all across nigeria all across africa it seems like evil and decadence is growing in strength 
spreading in the midst of the many churches respectfully speaking spreading in the midst of the many conferences spreading in the midst of the many crusades and god is saying every time the harvest looks difficult the laborers must take responsibility that there is something about the inefficiency of laborers i don't have the time would have considered many models of laborers in scripture and you'll find out that there were men who were so sharpened and chiseled they took cities in one day let me give you one example acts chapter 8 please the bible says from verse 5 there was a strange evangelist called philip and the bible says philip went down to the city of samaria philip went to a city not just a church he entered a city as a single man and the bible says he preached christ notice the content of his message he did not preach self he preached christ unto them the bible says the people gave heed verse 6 now with one accord to the things which philip spake why did they pay attention to what he was saying hearing and seeing the miracles which he did what miracles next verse the bible says for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of them that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies were lame and that were lame were healed as a result there was great joy not in the church there was great joy in the whole city because of the effective witness of one man are we together listen to me Enugu can be saved in a moment. I used to hear Reinhard Bonke of blessed memory. I would stand in the crowd watching him in his crusade and he will shout sometimes sobbing almost to tears that Africa shall be saved. He did his best and he's now gone to join the cloud of witnesses. And the Bible mandates that we follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Enugu state, in addition to the many churches that we have, and I have taken time to appreciate the vessels of the Lord. I can tell you that there is a cry in the heart of God. The cry in the heart of God is not just for more programs. The cry in the heart of God is not just for more conferences. The cry in the heart of the Lord is not just for ministry expansion as it were. The first true burden, the cry of the Spirit, is to see that the global harvest. Did you know the average, with all due respect, the average believer is not harvest conscious and that is a product of the kind of mentorship that we've submitted ourselves to so we generally leave it to a few zealous evangelists and altar calls are usually made just as a way of easing guilt to not look like you are not spiritual so we casually call people and it's clear that those who are coming out don't even know why they are coming out you see the unseriousness at the altar and at the end of it they say amen amen is not what saves no saying amen does not translate to salvation sample the average man of god in a territory and with all due respect interview the person and say articulate for me with intelligence what the gospel of salvation is you will be left in tears how do you bring people into an experience that you do not understand yourself get the average believer and i'm saying this with all due respect you you know that if i pick people from every row seated here now and i say stand here give them a mic let me know what let me know your thoughts and your understanding as to what the gospel is what exactly is the gospel of salvation isn't it amazing that we know what prosperity is with all due respect isn't it amazing that we know what breakthrough is isn't it amazing that we know what speed is we know what restoration is and yet the greatest message that will save a man that will bring him into the kingdom and give him the potential to become an effective witness is seldom known seldom taught seldom understood let me show you what the gospel is first corinthians 15 first corinthians 15 and the first four verses let's do bible study now generally speaking let me teach you something please believers please hear me there are three layers to the study of scripture 
this is from a theological standpoint now every time you study scripture there are three layers of study the first layer of study is called a historic slash archaeological layer because the bible is a historic material are we together yes so there is history and archaeology captured in these 66 books i hope you know by now that there are many other books that were written by the saints that did not make it into these 66 books they were not canonized there is the book of Joshua. there are the annals of the kings there is the dead Creed scroll there is the book of enoch i say all of this because the bible also makes reference to these books but for many reasons the bible lets us know that what is written here is sufficient for any believer in partnership with the holy spirit to understand god and understand his program you find that in john 21 john 20 and verse 30 he says many miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded in this book 31 now says but this is recorded that ye might believe that he is the son of god and that in believing you will have life eternal 31 now so what is recorded is sufficient enough to help you know god and help you learn God as far as the curriculum of knowing God that has been allotted to our generation and this dispensation is concerned are we still together so I said that there are three layers to the study of scripture the first is a historic and archaeological layer that means when you study scripture it's important that you backdate your mind and try to look from the lens of archaeology and the lens of history it will bring many things to perspective are we together number two there is the theological layer of scripture and this demands training this demands soundness you have to be sound as far as the theological construct of scripture is concerned if not you are not going to be balanced and your teaching will be lopsided largely a communication of opinions it is the theological understanding of scripture that births what we call doctrine it comes from the latin word doctrina it means a set of belief that was designed to translate a student to become like his teacher are we together so when the bible says that they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine there was a set of rules a set of beliefs that were communicated that produced mighty men there is a theological layer to scripture balance intelligence stature resides within this realm of teaching when you understand the theological construct of scripture then you can compare scripture with scripture and when you teach people you can predict what they will become because of your theological soundness unfortunately especially with all due respect um, there is a growing generation of people who have downplayed the value of theology and the understanding of the doctrinal construct of scripture simply because of things like signs and wonders so it does not matter the rubbish i teach once someone falls down it is an attestation we think that everything i communicated is right and i'm not being sarcastic so you find out that there is a lot of charismatism around our circles but there is no transformation and there is no growth number three there is the prophetic layer to scripture this again is the limitation of theology there is a prophetic layer to the study of scripture this one is between you and the holy spirit because one of the assignments of the holy spirit in the life of the believer is to be a revealer john 16 from verse 8 down to 12 it says i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them how be it when he the spirit of truth is come that he will guide you into all truth and that he will reveal to you he will show you the things that should come first corinthians chapter 2 when you read 10 and 11 the bible says but god had revealed it to us by his spirit for the spirit searched all things yea the deep things of god there are things in scripture that you can study from an archaeological layer a theological layer 
but then you get to a point where a revelation will come out of it that only you can see that is the prophetic dimension of scripture and to the layman who has not been given that light it will look like you are in error but the results will show that there was something you caught that only you caught now the danger is that you don't turn that prophetic encounter into a doctrine you will mislead people however for you it has come as rema it will be a secret of profound victory are we together for many of you who have followed my teachings let me give you one example i i give only one example because i don't want people to coin a lot of error galatians 2 2 paul was speaking to the church in galatia and he made a very profound expression he said i went up by revelation give it to us and i went up by revelation so he was speaking about his journey from a theological standpoint when you read it contextually it was just a continuation of a statement that i traveled by insight that means god told me to go to this place but god can bring a prophetic dimension of it read the first six words please ready one to read one more time this can come for you as a rema that men rise in life because of the revelation that they have access to now you see it is out of context theologically speaking but prophetically it has become a word for you and this revelation can drive you now to go and fast to now study are we together now someone can be looking for where a church land should be and you can stand reading your bible and all of a sudden you will hear a scripture that says ye have encompassed this mountain long enough turn you not words that is not a scripture about location of church but for you it has come as a prophetic word and not what literally will be where your church land is so we do not limit out the bible is a spiritual book and so we do not just limit it to its theological construct there is an allowance by the spirit where men can draw light from scripture for instance i hope you know that the the revelation of jonah entering the belly of the fish until jesus arrived we know that scriptures to be punishment of a prophet who was running away from god but jesus now came and gave us a prophetic meaning that it was not just the punishment of a man it was an adumbration of the death burial and resurrection how can a prophet's punishment have a prophetic meaning to the saints are we together Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. So we're discussing the global harvest in Romans 1 and verse 16 the Bible says Paul speaking to the church in Rome he says I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ he says for it is the power of God unto salvation first he says to the Jews first and also the Greek so the gospel is the power of God unto salvation Romans chapter 10, please, 13 and 14. Please follow carefully. Romans 10, 13, 14. Romans 10, help us media, 13, 14. Romans chapter 10. Do I pull it up from here? Okay. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When it has to do with salvation, that blessing is for whosoever. There are blessings in the kingdom that the Bible will say he gave unto some. Salvation is not one of them. Whosoever is qualified. This is the reason why in God's mind, there is no excuse why the harvest, because it is it was simple enough for whosoever to participate in it. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's look at verse 14. 14. He said, how then? This is the problem i like paul paul is diagnosing the situation that how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed 
and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher i like 15 and how shall they preach except they be sent listen question sent by who because the bible says in your prayer it is the lord of the harvest that sends laborers not just an ordination service it is the lord of the harvest so it says how shall they how shall they go except they be sent you can choose to move but it is far different from being sent hallelujah is someone learning because you see in god's dealings with people every time god calls a man he does not send you he calls you to himself then he sends you to the world he calls you to himself god never calls a man to an assignment no he calls you to himself he called them that they should be with him and then that he might send them when you are called you are called to him not it it is from the abundance of your encounter when he called moses he did not call moses to egypt he called moses to himself then he sent moses to egypt that is the protocol god calls men to himself and then he sends them to wherever it is that is the geography of your assignment now hear me please it means that if god can find sufficient laborers in enugu if god can find sufficient laborers in the east of the niger i can tell you there is sufficient power within his economy to bring and dismantle every curse dismantle every yoke it is not the curses that are so powerful that program families into failure the the power of those curses is a reflection of the weakness of the laborers are we together it's an uncomfortable truth but we must believe it there is no divination and no enchantment, no generational cause and no programming of darkness that should stand the power of God. But you see, the power of God is manifested through the hands of vessels. A vessel can misrepresent the power of God. If I have a tap, imagine with me that this is a tap that has running water from the dam and I open it a bit just to drop water. You see that that tap is misrepresenting the potential of the dam. You put a bucket there, it will take ages for the bucket to be filled. Yet there is potential as far as the provision of the dam is concerned to fill that bucket sometimes in seconds. I believe that in the course of this conference, that glory, grace from heaven will rest upon someone in this place. That in the name of Jesus, your witness will become so efficient cities can be taken in moments depending on the dimension of grace and power that we carry please sit down hallelujah i can tell you that the churches in enugu the men and women of god in enugu the vast army that god has in enugu if everybody understands the burden of the lord as far as the global harvest is concerned there will be no space for darkness you see when he says we are light and salt i'll talk a bit on that tomorrow light does not have to be everywhere to shine everywhere no The light that is shining across this stage everybody see but the light is not directly on you it just needs to be in a point and to be allowed to shine how about salt i was teaching my precious people on sunday you don't cook rice i mean soup and then you put salt ratio one to one of the vegetables is that how it works no sometimes for a whole plate a pinch of salt is enough to create that effect so when god says you are salt don't complain about numbers can i tell you if unbelievers must match believers for impact to happen you are not salt because one person look at the allocation of lands by caleb and joshua they literally allocated lands as if there were no giants there you this tribe this is your portion go and dismantle the people 
most of us do not know the kind of power look Paul was praying in Ephesians chapter 1 when we get to verse 19 he prayed that the church will know the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe hallelujah to understand the kind of power that has been invested in the believer man of God as far as God's program is concerned Enugu state please listen to me precious people of God the days that are coming will no longer be church and ministry and Christianity as usual no God's desire is to transform members from believers and members congregants and fans into witnesses there is a translation and it must be radically done because the king's business requires haste we have to graduate from celebrating the presence of loyal congregants into training people with an exact curriculum by the spirit of god to understand the ways of god that transition must happen in the spirit There are many congregants, but there are few witnesses. Few witnesses. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, it says, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Witness is not for members. No, members cannot bear witness. They can just be loyal to a man of God and whatever it is that he has to present. It then means an uncomfortable truth but this is true that the spiritual health of any territory is a reflection of the quality of spiritual voices within that territory as far as their spiritual orientation is concerned this is why i have profound respect and regard for every man of god who has left his busy schedule every woman of god in your various capacities you have left everything that you had to do just to come and sit down and listen and learn it takes a lot of humility but it also shows that you have love for the land you see because a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep there is nothing to be ashamed of if there is an area i do not know and i cannot see i must throw away pride and open up myself for the sake of the sheep that are depending on my transformation there will be a reflection of my weakness or my efficiency and so we must look beyond ourselves and focus on the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I had a vision many years ago. In that vision, I was in an elevated position and I saw an endless sea of people. They were crying and they were weeping, crying and sobbing. The vision was so real to me. And then the people who were in front, it was like the image just zoomed to me. And while they were crying, um, I asked why they were crying. And I could hear them whispering. They said there is no food and no water. It was as if that entire generation was being starved of food and water. And I said, who is the cause? And they unanimously pointed their hands and I said, no, I can't be that evil. I can't watch you. You're starving and then I have a means of helping you. I made up my mind and I said, you know what? I'm coming to rescue you. But it became in that vision that there were people who were persecuting me and it was out of fear. I was hiding in that room. But I made up my mind like Esther. I said, if I perish, I would perish. As soon as I opened the door, there was a giant gray bearded man wearing white. Now you know that was the Lord of the harvest, the spirit of the Lord himself. He stretched forth his giant hands and he said, place your hands on my hand. He said, I will walk with you. Let's go and we began to move from place to place jumping i i needed to jump from one building to the other i was too small in that vision i couldn't jump so he would take that giant step and then he would wait for me to slowly come and he was smiling with patience listen i shared this for a reason i can tell you this there is something that god is doing and if believers do not rise he will start using another strategy because by all means men must be saved help those under the anointing i just saw wind as i just mentioned that word wind i started seeing wind because we we celebrate the prophetic but one of the burden that god is placing upon people is that grace is an evangelistic dimension with power power that you will bear witness to the truth with such capacity and grace 
it will not just be about being a pastor with members how many people today 10 years they have never preached to their drivers their drivers are just driving their house helps are not safe yet they in the same office the person editing the book they are writing on salvation is not safe and they don't care because that person is just an administrator hallelujah can i tell you the truth the people you call god's generals were first god's evangelists do not covet their power if you do not want their assignment we have a lazy generation that is not interested in doing the work of God, but we want the power that should follow one who does the work of God, simply for the purpose of self-aggrandizement. The ones you call God's generals were first God's missionaries, God's emissaries. hallelujah and when it has to do with the global harvest it is not an assignment for pastors this is the problem we have mentored a generation to believe that you put a large crusade and then everybody who has potential to bring souls is at the mercy of one great man of God called Joshua Selman and his arrival is equal to the arrival of salvation you see that now so our idea is to keep preparing platforms for just one one people one one people and it is aborting the efficiency of that mission the assignment is to let people know when it has to do with a sal with salvation you do not need a great it, it is when it has to do with mentoring and maturing the saints this is when you need vessels that have been prepared to teach line upon line precept upon precept so when we organize crusades you see many believers who say you know what we want to organize crusades then we go and bring one powerful man of god pay for his flight i'm not saying there's anything wrong in that i'm saying it is just how how bad our orientation has been so those souls are at the mercy of the arrival of that man and if joshua selman decides to be too proud to come and says i'm not coming those souls remain at the mercy of one man's arrogance Yet you read your Bible, everybody Paul saw was a potential harvest. In prison, when they bound him, he was not thinking about his release. He was thinking about the person to be saved. Are we together? As soon as they were free, listen, as I'm talking to you, there is an impartation of a grace that will come upon your spirit, man. That you will never see unbelievers and be quiet. There is a fire that burns within your spirit. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king isn't it amazing that we have played politics with the global harvest isn't it amazing we have played celebrity with the global harvest apostle joshua selman the great man of god you can talk about that with respect to other things but not the salvation of souls that business is too serious for the carnality and unseriousness and childishness that continues to plague ministry there are people today who should not have gone to hell but they have gone to hell because the person mandated to be the reason for their salvation watch them in carelessness how many campus students graduated without fulfilling the quota 
of the salvation that was allotted to them how many prayer groups how many men of god did you know that god measures a thousand cubits there is an allocation of souls that everybody who desires to be a laborer is given per time and per season don't show me the building you are trying to build thank you but leave that is secondary don't show me the project don't show me the car you want to buy thank god for it show me how many souls daily show me how many souls weekly show me how many souls monthly listen look at me if you bring a soul winner today that nobody knows on social media a soul winner today who is not a celebrity and you bring him to stand here and then you bring joshua selman the one that people praise the lord thank you are we together now so you bring a serious soul winner no influence no crowd nobody knows him no honorarium and then you bring joshua selman the great man of god chances are excellent that when you look at two of us honor is accorded to the celebrity people that you see and it has put pressure on people many people who were getting it right have turned to start getting it wrong because there is a narrative we are giving that if men do not celebrate you and you are not all over social media and you are making impact and making headlines you are not doing well i'm not saying there's anything wrong with those things but there were people who were sincere their passion was unadulterated they were not looking for a name they were looking to see this man they come to pass and the pain now is that there are many younger ministers learning some of these things when they began to walk with god it was never about crowd from their lowly estate some of them on campuses some of them they were choir directors when they started having their encounters now they've left all the old notebooks that they used to write things with the holy ghost they don't even know where it is now in search for a celebrity lifestyle Isn't it amazing that we hold massive crusades that are full of unbelievers? We talk, we sing, we dance for hours. Then we make an altar call and only two people come out. That is a report card to tell you the kind of laborers we are. And you know, not by word of knowledge, that that place is truly full of unbelievers who need Jesus. What kind of gospel are we preaching? That a sinner is there for hours. We claim we are charging the atmosphere. And at the end of it, that man is not convicted. Go to Acts chapter 2 and read what happened to the people when broken vessels preach the gospel. Let it be known to you, O Israel, said Peter, that this same Jesus you have crucified has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. The Bible says they were caught to the heart. The same thing that happened to the two men that were going to Emmaus. That every time there was a communication of the gospel, men were caught to the heart, not condemned, but that there was such an imprint of the spirit. And they said, men and brethren, what do we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and to your children, to as many as are far off, even those that the Lord your God will call. Can I tell you, men of God, we have a serious repentance to do in this conference. The first repentance is not sinners. The first repentance, beginning from the person talking to you, this is not tell them that we cry before the Lord and say, Lord, help us. Your father died an unbeliever. You never preached to him, but you collected money from him. And you, you gave him, you were quick to market the invitation of your building project because that one affects your ego directly. Isn't it? We are proud to give posters. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not shaking you to condemn you. Isn't it amazing that we are bolder over other things, but not salvation? If at the end of this meeting nobody shouts, nobody falls under the anointing, 
nobody does anything maybe i come and preach very simple no greek no hebrew no nothing and i make an altar call you will most likely live disappointed if they ask you how is that meeting you say I, I i expected more what you meant was that it does not matter who is saved or not let there be power let me see miracles let me see blind eyes open and if salvation does not happen you are a great man of god we must reorient ourselves again because this please come and help me on this this lack of proper orientation is raising a young generation that is ignoring god the content of people's fasting and prayer is never about souls and the program of God. It's Lord, take away shame from my life. Give me power too. Let people know that I have power. And there is nothing wrong with that. I remind you, those you call God's generals were first God's missionaries. They were God's evangelists. They were God's emissaries. Hallelujah. I can now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. The centuries and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. See, when I, when I was brought from the airport and while I was in the car. I was looking at all the people the organization and everything i was so touched in my heart and as my car was moving i was watching the protocol all moving in order and i nodded my head i said this is what destroys our generation celebrity joshua selman he has arrived and there are many young people that is all they are emulating somebody can watch that scenario and go and do a seven days dry and say because of that oh god what happened to this man must happen to me i want what is it about I... listen ladies and gentlemen we have repentance to do this night oh don't be offended but if it is genuine revival you want to see in any good state we must cast our golden crown i'm not saying you are not doing well but we must cast it and say lord there is something wrong with our spiritual orientation can i tell you our fathers did not have a lot of revelation but they had passion for souls that's the reason why when you read about men like apostle babalola and some of your fathers who have gone to be with the lord they don't know the things we know now in truth but my goodness they saw signs and wonders because their their intention was not fame their intention was not miracles their intention was not celebrity all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted every time i pray i pray for myself i say lord deliver me from the foolishness of pride the deceit of fame and the distraction that comes with popularity mundane distractions people clap and i'm saying there's, there's there's a place for honor but i'm telling you if you know god and you have met god nothing else will satisfy you nothing if it is the god of the bible you met i don't care what you have before that time there is a hunger that only the size of God can feel in a man. Ministers of the gospel, when you understand God, you will see that there's no reason for competition. Competition is proof that there was a problem before that time. The problem is the, there, there is an orientation that naturally leads to competition. Are we together? There are souls in Enugu at the mercy of serious laborers as god grants me the grace to travel from nation to nation i thank god for all the bits that god is doing in my life but i'm telling you for me or oh, this man you see died since i graduated from doing ministry since and i started serving the king with my heart sincerely i'm telling you i'm not just here to come and bamboozle and, no 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 
that I see somebody that Jesus died for that you can translate that person I've had the honor of being at the deathbed of a few people I've seen them moments before they would die and the moment I go to pray for people maybe cancer whatever and you see them happy ah, apostle has come meaning miracle has come my first spot of call is to get this man saved first that way I have the confidence it does not matter what happened if the person closes his eyes to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord ladies and gentlemen I do not know anybody who has gone out of the earth with his money I do not know anybody who has gone out of the earth with his business card I do not know anybody who has gone out of the earth with his certificate I do not know anybody who carried this building project that you are arguing about out of the earth if the trumpet sounds today my suits does not matter my English does not matter the, the invitations and the social medias does not matter the only thing that matters the hymn writer used to say must I go and empty handed he says must I meet my savior soul this generation does not even know that hymn again he says not one soul with which to greet him he says must I empty handed go some of you it was under those atmospheres you were raised before some of us came as men of God and started deceiving you and took away your passion away let there be a restoration of that genuine fire. It was those days we used to sing songs like, I pledge allegiance to the land With all my heart, with all I am I will seek to honor His command I pledge allegiance to the land there were people who would never sleep until one soul were saved a father in the lord that the geo baba de boy when he clocked 80 he made a request and he said for the remaining part of his life knowing that the time is not too long again that the only thing he wants not cars not houses the only thing he wants is to give god eight million more souls after that he'll be ready to go home and it is that vision that brought up the light up crusades that you see eight million souls i remember renhard bonke in his final days when he came and had his final crusade in lagos he went back and all he was concerned about was souls the man you call billy graham who became like a spiritual advisor to kings he did not start by looking for fame he sought for jesus and he sought to see him revealed in many lives and god translated him to a sign and a wonder hallelujah and you hear me nobody will win these souls that we see and live except us but we should not get God to a point where because of our carelessness you will start seeing unbelievers that in one month God will train because of the vacancy we have given let God not have to start going to bring madmen in Gadara to win 12 cities because the saints are not ready let God not have to start using prostitutes at the well to go and say come see a man because many people there are unbelievers you will see who God will be training them while he's using them because the, the king's business requires haste. Listen, my first assignment tonight is to bring the burden of the spirit to you to tell you that according to God's ranking of honor, you are very small except that the size of your souls increase your ranking. Jesus himself was so important he took the issue of souls so serious he had to account for all the souls that were given to him and for the one who was lost he accounted john 17 please sit down he had to account for those souls what did paul know 
that even in prison ladies and gentlemen if you are bound in prison and you come out of that prison i don't know about you but if i come out of prison i will run out of that city and run home not tall as soon as from the prison the jailer wanted to kill himself he said no we're potential harvest you and your house we are here we are safe all i'm concerned about he said what do i do he said now you're talking take me to your house he saw the lady with divination he was not thinking a potential church member uh -uh. this lady is used by the devil and there has to be deliverance for her and he got her saved they got flogged that's how they got into the prison everybody they saw if you made a mistake of giving paul even if it was 10 minutes to preach you were in trouble when he stood before felix he stood before agrippa he said thank you for the opportunity he's not dying that is my scare just allow me say something and the king said you almost convinced me hallelujah every time i go to sleep i hear the cry of many who need jesus I literally hear the cry is the Spirit of God waking me to say thank you son for what you are doing but there is more and that more cannot be done by one man I can tell you the days of celebrity is drying it's going down by the Spirit of God because you see if all we keep doing is marketing this celebrity Christianity it is a risk for the people themselves we will destroy their focus destroy their consecration put the people they are mentoring under pressure because it will now look that anybody who wants to become like joshua selman is not thinking of having your passion is thinking of having your influence and while that is important that is only relevant when your heart condition is right let me until we go to the tonight i'm dealing with the global harvest when we now get to the kind of vessel that god is building there is a kind of believer you must become to do business with god but ladies and gentlemen hear me imagine that everyone in this place won one soul genuinely to jesus christ we will have this number of souls in one day do you think this number of salvation in one day will bring joy to the heart of the father this is what should be behind the singing ministry this is what should be behind our evangelisms this should be the primary burden in the heart of an intercessor that when you are interceding you are not just saying oh god i'm tired of this cause in my life no you are saying let the cloud that is sitting over lives and destinies and territories let it be rolled away so that there is free passage and entrance to hear the gospel Take it high for me. Let me sing a song for you. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change through me. Whoever you want to save, Lord, you can save through me. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Wherever you want to go lord you can go through me listen i was born an evangelical and i remember those days when people would come to preach they would ask how many people want to be missionaries to go to the harvest and you would see people come out as though they were coming out for a funeral you would see responsible people i'm not just talking of some weak people who don't know what to do with their lives they would come out and you would see them cry some would hold the hands of their wives and come together and when they came that was not just an altar call for salvation it was a commitment and a vow that for the rest of my life i have signed in to see that souls go to jesus 
now you make that kind of call as a man of god and you'll be left disappointed you would doubt if god really spoke to you because people are not interested in jesus they are interested in using him i hope you know that those around jesus did many things with jesus others wanted to make money out of him others wanted fame they wanted their mother to negotiate positions for them but there were those who loved him sincerely out of the many people he blessed do you notice that when jesus resurrected everybody was around him but when he was at the cross only john so not many people want to stand before the cross the cross is a difficult place it strips you of your ego it strips you of everything that represents your sense of self-worth however the power of the throne is seen on the cross i have made a vow with my life that in life and death i will not do everything i cannot do everything but as far as it depends on me somebody must know jesus somebody must serve jesus somebody must learn his way and if in the process it pleases him to take me home let it be that for me to live is christ and to die is gain let me tell you the truth if many people had this orientation they would not be in a rush to go into ministry when jesus called people when they saw the enormity of the assignment many of them ran away go and read church history there were people men and women that jesus called for years because they knew the kind of passion that the work of the ministry would demand they ran away look at jonah jonah was a prophet and when god called him he ran away jonah was not a fake prophet he knew that destiny was upon him and that god was gracious and compassionate can i tell you the truth i have made up my mind that i will not just receive things from god i will not just be a great man of god there is a place for influence and all these things will teach them tomorrow but right now i have brought the burden of the spirit to enugu please hear me great people of god you can start from your jerusalem there are people who are married their husbands are going to hell living in the same house their wives are going to hell living in the same house their children are going to hell you bought a car for your child but no jesus you gave him good education but no jesus god forbid but one accident and that child is gone there are people you know today who left your life in january you almost don't want to think about it but the truth is that they are in hell right now because the Bible tells us that and he says for God so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish that means whoever does not believe in him will perish I do not want to live in the memory that many people were allocated to my life to know Jesus and because of carelessness pride or seriousness or inefficiency I allowed them to die without Jesus and don't allow the devil make you believe that what I'm saying does not matter no one day to come to the corridors of your destiny did the rich man not have an opportunity when he saw Lazarus Lazarus did not have money but he had conviction the rich man ignored him and they all died sin too the rich man found himself in hell burning with pain and Lazarus was at the bosom of Abraham watch the request of the rich man please dip your finger in water and I would appreciate even a drop of water to quench my thirst and he said no that possibility does not exist here again you wasted your time through distraction and he said all right I know that I am doomed but please one request can you send Lazarus back to my people if they see him raise up from the dead they will believe him let him come and beg them and say stop what you are doing there are nobler pursuits in life make sure that before you start looking for money your salvation is intact make sure that before you are building the churches your salvation is intact make sure before you are sending the pastors to build branches that they are safe indeed and he said no they have the law and they have the prophets they should listen to them ladies and gentlemen please hear me i've not come to condemn i've come to stretch you in the spirit to tell you the days of nominal christianity has come to an end that jesus christ is looking for people who will make the global harvest happen i prayed and i told him i said lord you can count on me 
by your grace and by your spirit you can count on me to go to the nations you can count on me to take your life and your power to the nations you can count on me sometimes i look at my schedules and the things that i do i get so busy and tired i jumped into the aircraft and i was literally sleeping until the plane landed and sometimes you are tempted to say why do you stretch yourself like this one time i sent um baba deboye's son i said please tell daddy he should be resting oh and he laughed and replied me he said daddy will not rest he said he will rest in heaven there's no time to rest now he already knows that his days are not so long no matter how long so he's stretching and pushing the last push have you noticed that the fathers the older they get every other thing does not make sense again only souls after exploring life from pillar to post at the end of your life you will find out that all that really matters the price of one soul is equal everything in the world it says what shall it profit a man if he gains and loses walk with me let me just show you the gospel of salvation and then we'll pray hallelujah I want you to bring five people for me I just saw like light coming on five people two of them are ladies and that lady there is a grace God is raising you to be a mighty savior in your family a mighty savior mighty savior there is a grace I just saw light on one person there's a mighty impartation there is someone you are receiving is a mighty is a mandate that God is placing upon your head bring them out hey! a revival that will break out in this city after this conference I want you to believe me a mighty revival a revival without walls there are ancient mantles that are returning back 
some of you have left those graces and left those mantles it's time for it to it's time for it to come back mantles of evangelism that have been deserted by individuals by denominations you are picking it again the lord of the harvest is visiting enugu again the lord of the harvest is visiting enugu again the lord of the harvest is visiting enugu again I want you to discern 1st Corinthians 15 give us verse 1 to 4 please sit down if you can when the Lord of the harvest comes you will know he has come you will know he has come there is a gentleman called Shinedu your name is Shinedu there is a fire of revival that is coming upon Shinedu and the Lord is saying you are my battle axe you are my battle axe. I don't know where that person is. Your name is Shinedu. You are a pastor. Kale Kashoba Skadiba. I need to do what I'm doing first because I'm seeing like a cloud, but this cloud is fire that is falling. And women, I don't know what it is with women in any group. There is a spirit of revival. Please hear me. I'm speaking apostolically. Women, this is your season. There is a season. Women, a, a grace and a spirit is coming upon women. This is what I'm hearing in my spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that God will find worthy vessels in you. One of you, I, I just saw fire resting on you. Just one of you. Let that grace come upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let that grace come upon you now. Let that grace come upon you now. Let that grace come upon you now. Come upon you now. I, 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 if you can i have to show you this scripture please do we have ushers so that you don't just expose especially the ladies if they are not if there's nothing you can just keep them behind there is a reason why i ask that these people come hallelujah who is ugo chuku i'm hearing the name ugo chuku ugo chuku ugo chuku you're a light-skinned gentleman What's your name? Ugo Chuku. Where are you from? Imo State. You are not from this? No, from Imo State, but I want, I want to pray for you. What's your name? Huh? Come. This is the man I saw. Hallelujah. I will pray for you. Where are you from? You are in Enugu here. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you. There is a yoke of darkness. It will take time to minister to people tomorrow, but I have to obey what God is. What do you do? 
I just I just graduated. I've been I've been waiting to know. My friend, you. there is a mighty call of God upon your life. That grace, let it come upon you now. You step into that call. Never to be weak in your spirit. Never to be weak in your spirit. May my God begin to lead you through experiences that will prune, build, furnish you until you become a mighty vessel. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, for all of you who came out, let that grace rest upon you. May you begin a walk with the Spirit, uninterrupted walk with the Spirit that will transform and translate you into a mighty battle axe, even by the Spirit of the living God. I declare this upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go to our scripture. I want to show you something. Please. 1 Corinthians 15. Please sit. Please sit. Because of the security situation in the land, we want to finish very fast. So, I'm just introducing tonight. Now, please look up. This is Paul articulating the gospel in a very clear term. If you have never known what the gospel is, this right here is the gospel. Moreover, my goodness, okay. Brethren, he says, I declare unto you the gospel. Watch this now. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, he says, which also ye have received. I wish we could project it. I want the people to see it. Is that possible? Hallelujah. They call you Becky. Becky. That should be Rebecca, I think. Becky. That is the name that I hear in my spirit that they call you. Becky. In the name of Jesus Christ. I hear the Lord saying it is coming to an end. It is coming to an end. This is a circle of tragedy. It is coming to an end. I'm seeing someone, you buried your brother, you buried your father, and the Lord is telling me to rebuke the spirit of death. Help her. In the name of Jesus. This is a spirit of death hanging around your family. Did the Bible not say it is the power of God unto salvation? I decree and declare. In the name of Jesus, the one who died and rose again, let that plague of death come to an end over your family. Hallelujah. One gentleman, one lady, two of them will shout under the anointing. Please let me speak to them. Don't mind me. Let me just do my thing as a spirit of the living God. One gentleman, one lady. One gentleman, one lady. This is by the influence of the Spirit. Is a mighty grace that is coming upon that gentleman and that lady. There is a man of God, you are watching me. Everything you are seeing in this meeting, the Lord is going to replicate it in your life and ministry. Of course, I know that there's a place for impartation, but there is a particular man of God. God is showing me this thing. That your ministry will be characterized by a strange demonstration of the power of the Spirit. You will see the manifestation of His power and grace in a way that will surprise you. In a way that will surprise you. You see, let me tell you this. There is absolutely no reason to fake anything. It's a mockery and an insult to yourself and to God. When a man goes to collect uh, power or charm, it is foolishness. It is even a burden to your own self. If you know anything about the devil, there is no freedom and liberty with him. There is a genuine price by the spirit you can pay to carry grace. I will be showing you tomorrow what it really takes to carry the power of the spirit in not saying i have power showing i have power by god and for the purpose of the kingdom hallelujah let's finish the scripture first corinthians 15 verse 1 moreover brethren i declare unto you the gospel watch this which i preach unto you which also ye have received and wherein ye stand reading to 4 verse 2 by which also ye are saved 
so how were they saved by the communication of the gospel he said if ye keep in memory what i preach unto you unless ye have believed in vain what then is the gospel verse 3 for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received how that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures for and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus his son man and creation being the object of that sacrifice and the bible declares based on the authority of scripture that any man who believes believes in what number one that jesus came as an expression of the love of the father number two that he came and prayed and paid the ultimate price of death shedding his blood and dying are we together now and that he resurrected by the glory of the father peter rounded up his sermon in acts chapter 2 by saying let it now be known to you O israel that this same jesus whom you have crucified have today been exalted as lord and christ pastors we must preach the gospel before we teach the word the word is only for believers who are saved please listen preaching the word rema doctrine communication of truth is only for people who have met jesus it is a waste teaching anybody who is not saved the teaching ministry was designed as you will be learning tomorrow to mature the saints to translate them to be people of stature and to be witnesses but in order of priority the first assignment of any man of god and any believer as far as being incorporated in god's program is concerned is to see to it that men meet jesus not by blindly claiming salvation not by assuming they are saved longevity around church does not translate to salvation serving a man of god sincerely does not translate to salvation being a worker in church in fact being a sincere person does not translate to salvation hallelujah and when you come out an altar call is just a means of organizing those who are saved the bible lets us know according to romans chapter 10 9 and 10 that the protocol for salvation is that your heart and your lips must participate if your heart and your lips does not participate you are not saved hear what the bible says if thou shalt confess with your mouth the lord jesus and thou shalt believe in thine heart you see that most people do the confession part but in truth they don't believe and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead when you study about the Pharisees and the Sadducees it was this one striking difference that was a subject of controversy Pharisees and Sadducees never were friends they only came together as a force to fight Jesus before now they were always at loggerheads and it was the doctrine of the resurrection I hope you know that one of the foundational doctrine there are six foundational doctrines according to Hebrews chapter 6 that build the believer to maturity and stature are we together one of it is the doctrine of the resurrection you are not a Christian if you do not believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead because the victory was at the point of resurrection resurrection was proof that he had defeated sin Satan death hell and the grave if he did not raise up from the dead there would not be that statement where is oh death where is your victory oh hell where is your sting jesus rose again it is true and because he rose again all the saints shall arise remember apostle paul was teaching the church in thessalonica and he was comforting them and teaching them as touching the destiny of those who die and he let them know that when people die in the faith we do not say they are dead we say they have slept because when men sleep they wake up so the concept of the resurrection is what changed the idea for a christian from death to sleep 
that those who sleep sleep at night and those who sleep have an assurance that they will wake up the psalmist said i lay me down and i slept some three and i awake for the lord sustain me so that one day watch this now a day is going to come ladies and gentlemen i wish i had the time i would have taught you the seven pillars of the christian faith there are seven pillars that represent the christian faith we may differ across many divides we represent different denominations here with the honor to our various beliefs and there might be differences here and there but there are seven pillars that must not shift if you do not believe that you are not a christian one of it is the incarnation that jesus was god and is god and came born of the virgin mary you must believe in the incarnation you must believe in his earth work that he lived upon the earth he walked although a man he lived a sinless life born of mary and born of the spirit you must believe in the fact that he came to represent the purposes of god he came as an advocate there are three major reasons why jesus came to the earth number one jesus came to the earth as a correction of our understanding about an unknown god because until jesus manifested men did not know god there was no widespread manifestation of the holy spirit so the dead inhabitants had to depend on what the prophets told them god was and they made a lot of mistakes there were gaps in their knowledge they credited many things that was not god to god because we see in part and we prophesy in part so jesus came as a manuscript he came as a marking script correcting the prior idea that we had about god so everything the prophets claim that god was we will reference it against the life and the earthwork of jesus and it now gives us a scriptural basis to edit what they told us god is for instance when the bible says the lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love you have a right to doubt it until you see it proven in the life of jesus how did he respond to people the bible will say he was moved with compassion based on jesus we can say those prophets were right as far as touching that statement is concerned are we together now when you hear things like a lying spirit came from god now we look at jesus and jesus said satan was a liar and the father of all them that lie so we know that based on jesus we need to correct that thing the prophet said that is how we judge scripture we judge scripture using the lens of jesus are we together the second reason why jesus came was as a pattern man a model to the believer that will come out as a result of his resurrection we are products and fruits of the resurrection in truth we are not i know it's old testament new testament but the believer is not really the new testament as we say we are products of it are we together now it was on account of the resurrection it was the holy spirit that birthed our dispensation god for us god with us emmanuel when jesus walked upon the earth now god in us the dispensation of the holy spirit began from acts chapter 2 and will end finally when believers are raptured in fact what you call rapture is the temporary exiting of the holy spirit together with the believers because we are bound with him we have to go to that is the reason why the the bible defines light as the world without us are we together now it's very important for you to understand this from the day the holy ghost came to the earth he has not left earth he cannot leave it's inseparable he shall be with you and shall be in you he's with us the holy spirit has the official status of the lord of the harvest he is the overseer over this global harvest this is the reason why we know that in spite of our frailty the mission will not fail not because of us but because of the builder the lord of the harvest are we learning now so jesus came as a model the bible says looking unto jesus he calls him the author and the finisher of our faith he came to model to the believer what it means to be approved of god what it means to please the father because the father had this to say about jesus that he was his beloved son in whom he was well pleased 
the third reason why Jesus came was as a mediator that's the one that most believers know as a mediator he came through the, the penalty of death and the shedding of his blood that he will call many sons into glory reconciling us back to the father why to give us access to receive righteousness the life of God and eventually the Holy Spirit you find that in Galatians chapter 3 I believe from verse 8 it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is every man that hanged upon the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles verse 8 he says um, that to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith I'm not sure my media person is working with me verse 8 you go to 8 huh? am I right on that find it for me yeah 8 9 10 I think somewhere along that line Christ that redeemed us from the curse of the law so to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith nobody has access to the Holy Spirit until you have righteousness equal to that of Jesus and that qualifies you now to have the life of God even the Spirit of God this is very important I'm saying this because it is important for us to know and understand that if we must be effective if Jesus Christ must be revealed in any good state the first part of call is a restoration of the mandate of soul winning a restoration of the mandate of soul winning a restoration of the mandate of soul winning that every church every mission agency indeed every believer we must know that we are principally saddled with the assignment of seeing to it that souls are saved beginning from our families to schools to everywhere and the bible lets us know that in the mind of god every unsaved person is called a harvest a harvest that is already ripe that if for any Thank you so much for listening to the end i pray that whatever that you have listened today you are not going just to keep it but you're going to do what god has told you through this message and please kindly if you're new here or you are not so i mean you have not subscribed kindly just click on the red button below the video and subscribe to this my channel and also you can share this video with someone else thank you so much and see you in my next video bye